our nervous system is functionally a triangle upside down, okay, with a point. This is the brain stem. Uh -huh. I'm talking about the circuits that are being regulated in the brain stem that regulate our underlying state, percolate information up to the brain stem, and the brain stem literally is transmitting that information to higher brain structures, enabling access to different brain areas. So that when we're in safe states, we can access higher cortical functions, but when we're in danger states, those systems turn off and we're defensive. Mm -hmm. If we think of this triangle, and each time we get higher and higher, we have greater diversity of expression and outcome. So I'm talking about basically three states that provide a neural platform for great diversity of expression. If you are in a constant dangerous environment, your nervous system is going to find it difficult to detect safety. So if it can't detect safety, it's going to be in the state of more fight-flight, a low threshold to react. And when you're in that state, you're going to misread other people's cues. So you're more likely to see neutral faces as being aggressive. You're more likely to see fearful faces as if they were angry. So you can really confound difficult relationships. Uh, so you won't be able to use people uh, to self-regulate. They be, they'll become threatening and reactive. So if you have a history in which there is no experiences of using people to regulate in a very pro-social positive way, people will then become threatening or damaging to you. And what I always want to emphasize is that the social interactional behavior is a neural exercise. It's a neural exercise of using newer mammalian structures, since it's evolutionary newer structures, to inhibit very primitive defensive systems. So if we feel that we're in safe environments, we'll use our face, we'll use the intonation of our voice, and we'll negotiate a relationship or maintain safety by doing that. And this is what friends do, this is what lovers do, this is what supposedly teachers are supposed to do and therapists, right? If we're a little bit in a more dangerous situation, like a novel environment, we don't know anything about it, we'll go into another physiological state that will support fight or flight mobilization behaviors. And if we can fight or flee, get away from something, then we've actually negotiated that danger. But what if we can't get away from the danger? What if we're held down or we're in a in confined environment? What if we're trapped in a car or a plane or in a bathroom and someone is now going to hurt us? Uh, the possibility is that we could trigger a third circuit which shuts us down. And it's that shutdown circuit that makes it's so important in understanding trauma, and the polyvagal theory articulates that shutdown circuit, while most other theoretical models of trauma and, and uh, what people would call stress disorders only talk about a fight-flight system. Okay, so that's the, the core of what I would tell a person about the uh -huh. polyvagal theory. And the second component of that core is that these responses are not voluntary our nervous system is picking up information in the environment and evaluating that information not on a cognitive level but on a un, on a subconscious we want to bring back that term but on a, a neurobiological level where we're picking up features of risk or danger and our nervous system puts us into those different states and we can become aware of that because when we're in certain environments we may feel our heart pounding and we may ask the question why is my heart pounding and then you'll say, well, something in the environment must have triggered it. But often we don't know the cues that trigger these things. So the point I want to make is first that the polyvagal theory provides us with an understanding of three neural circuits that support different types of behavior. One is social engagement behaviors in safe environments. The other is fight, flight, and mobilization behaviors. And the third one is really a shutting down a second level of defense.